on today's episode of Cunningham Garage, we got a dead alternator and a Lexus LS 400. Let's pull it out and see what happened. Get down. There it is guys. This is my 1992 Lexus LS 400. It's a project car that you've seen on previous videos, but not too much. I've had a chance to work on it. Changed the water pump, you guys seen that video. And I had a problem with the car for a little while. I was gonna make a video of me trying to diagnose what the problem was. The car was actually like misfiring. Well, it turned out it was all because of me. I changed the water pump on this and there is a sensor for each cam to tell you the cam position. Well, somehow the wires on this one got chewed up somehow by something. I'm guessing it was a belt that going by or something caught it to where it chewed up the wires just enough to make the engine misfire and it was random. So luckily, Tore the engine down a little, found that sensor, replaced it. it was, you know, hey, hey car, cool, car's working. Everything was awesome, took it out for a drive. And alternator dropped out on me. Which, hey, if you guys know LS400s, that's, uh, that's a common issue. <laughs> and I'll show you why before we start getting into the taking it apart. This right here, this little reservoir, that's the power steering. Directly underneath it is the alternator. It's, uh, you can't see in there, I'll have to get a light. But underneath that, trust me, there's an alternator. Well, what happens over time is that, also, that power steering will leak directly onto that alternator and short it out. Or I've even heard of guys, you know, having random shorts where the car will charge for a minute and then it'll stop and they'll shut it off and it'll run fine again and it stops again. <laughs> so the big thing right now is I'm going to take all these awesome pieces of plastic off because you've got to love Lexus, which are all unbolted already. I'm just going to show you what goes where and how to take it off. But I'm going to remove all this and we're going to start taking that alternator off. So I've got you guys on a tripod. Hope you can hear me pretty good. So. My hood struts don't work, I just removed them. So I just got this awesome pole. Um, because the alternator died on me while I was driving it on a test drive, just to save my battery, I've got it on a, a battery charger, just to be safe. It's, it'll charge it till it's good and then it'll just you know, keep it topped up. So what you wanna do is, if you have all this useless crap on your engine, just remove it. Most of these have just clips, mine are, uh, Mine are broken, so mine just come off. Plus these are unbolted already. So this will slide up out of here after you unbolt it. It's got like 10 or 12 millimeter bolts on it. And then you'll just remove, before you do all this, unhook the battery. Never try and unhook an alternator with the battery hooked up, unless you just want to light up like a light bulb. It'll it'll give you a sucky day. So, with that said, what you'll do next is remove that, remove the, you know, the coolant out of the engine. So there should be a drain down here at the bottom. Put a container down and drain it, which I've already done. So then I'll remove the radiator hoses. You'll unhook them and remove it. I'm strictly doing this just for, just for space. So once that's done, you can unhook this shroud and it should remove. And then there's two clamps right here, hold the radiator on, just remove those. I'll just put those on the other side. And what I'm going to do is unhook the bottom radiator hose from the top. Let's move it, guys. So this top radiator hose will just undo that clamp and pull it off. What I'm going to do is literally, I'm going to take this clamp and just kind of stick it upward. And I'm just going to shove it down here. We're not going to remove the radiator, but I just needed the hoses out of the way. That way, I can use this right here. 
This is used to remove a belt. So you'll put this on the tensioner down here that moves. Makes it a whole lot easier with this. Then you'll pick the belt off, like so. Always the fun stuff. And you'll remove the belt. Let's go to the next part. Okay guys, so you can see here is the engine bay. I've got some lights on, so you can see the alternator right there. There's that pesky power steering pump I was telling you about. See, the alternator is right under it. And if you look at mine, let me get you down in here. Look how coated and power steering fluid that is. So what that'll do is get down in the windings in the power steering pump and short it. So what you're going to, what you're going to want to do is remove that nut that's the top see if i can get you all the way down here yeah look at that there's the other one you'll unbolt those two and this alternator should slide just straight out and on the back i'll pull it out and i'll show you guys what to unhook so i've unbolted the alternator so the nut is on the top of the alternator and that long bolt is on the bottom they're both 14 millimeter and you can see where the nut went on the top and the alternator is pulled forward now. And you can just see, just, I grabbed it with my hand just once and look at just nasty power steering crap. And you can see it everywhere. So this will go back to why I said unhook your battery first. This, let me, uh, there we go. So that is a straight battery cable. Basically, it comes from the battery to the alternator. That's what's gonna charge your battery. So if you were to touch that against metal when it was still hooked up, you're gonna get a light show and make yourself a Christmas light. And right there is, you know, the signal wire and the, you know, your battery's not charging wire from the alternator. So that'll just be a, like a plug I bet I can unhook it right now. Or not. <laughs> I'm going to unhook it, pull this thing out, and we'll take a look at it. I'll show you guys how to unhook it. So there we go. The alternator is freed from its hole. Well, I'm not going to pull the wire right now. I'll show you guys the plug. So there's the alternator. And you can see just how filthy. Look how, look. There's like a thing in, you know. I mean, it's covered in just all kinds of crud look at that you can see where it's been dripping out of it it's just it's bad so what they'll be is a round three prong is it yeah the three prong plug and it's got a clip you'll put that clip in and just pull it out this is just a stud it's a 12 millimeter nut on there and you'll just unhook that and pull that cable off and you're free Go ahead and pull her out. And then once you have it out, there's two options. You got two options here for you. You can either go and get a brand new one. I don't know how much a brand new one costs because I'm way too cheap to buy a brand new one because that's ridiculous. It's I think it's a couple hundred dollars. But depending on what city or country, wherever you're watching this, at least I know what I do all the time and it always worked out great for me is look up online somewhere in your city there's going to be somebody who rebuilds alternators and starters so what would cost you $300 say that's like a $300 alternator at the auto parts store that's probably going to cost me like 50 to maybe $75 to get that one rebuilt and when I get it back I'm, I'm going to show you guys. Maybe I'll even talk to the guy who runs a shop. Maybe he'll let me record him. Get it rebuilt. Stop going to these auto parts stores because you know what? The guy who's going to... I'm going to take this to to rebuild it. He rebuilds alternators and they go to the auto parts store. So technically, you're buying a rebuilt alternator from the parts store that came from that guy. Or whatever guy in your city. It's basically you're cutting out the middleman <laughs> so and it saves you a ton of money and those guys usually warranty their work and it's awesome and i've had got i've had them rebuild 
I've had starters rebuilt by these guys before and they literally did it in like three hours and the thing looked brand new. It was amazing. And the guy basically told me if it ever breaks, bring it back. It never did break. <laughs> I stole the car before it broke. So with that free, we're gonna take that and get it rebuilt. So let's see if I can get to this shop and uh, talk to the owner. So it's another day, alternator's back, as you can see. I couldn't really film at the guy's shop. He was, that shop was really, really busy. So I didn't wanna bug the guy about my YouTube channel and talking to him about alternators, but so it's rebuilt. Look how nice that looks now. He cleaned everything up. All the guts inside are brand new. He, uh, he kind of laughed when he told me what was wrong with it. Because I asked him, he's, I dropped it off. It was a Thursday. I dropped it off on a Thursday at, what was it, uh, like 3 o'clock. And Friday, Friday morning at 8 a.m., he called me and told me it was ready. So, I mean, it could have been the same day service if I dropped it off at like 8 a.m. on a Thursday morning. So, it's all fixed. But he told me that basically everything inside of it was shorted out because of the uh, power steering. So, yeah. Which I know what you're going to say. Am I going to put it back without fixing that power steering? For now I am. I'm going to get some parts later on to fix that but for now this is going to go in just to make sure everything is fixed so i'm going to go ahead and start putting this back together and i'll show you guys with it back in the car so the alternator is back in you can see it down there put the belt back on so the next step is to put the basically when you guys put it back in just do reverse of taking it out just like anyone else would tell you so my next step is to take the radiator hose, put it back on. The other radiator hose, put that back on. Fill it with coolant. You know, all the all the goodness. And uh, fire this thing up. So I'll bring it back to you guys. I'll put an inside view with me when I fire it up. So we're inside the car. I have the key in. Ignore... When I... I'll have to explain this real quick. <laughs> this is a Lexus LS400. This is the steering wheel from a 2002 or 2003 Toyota Camry or Corolla. When I got this car, the reason this is on here, when I got this car, I got the car for really, really cheap, a few hundred bucks. It had no steering wheel. The guy took the steering wheel and sold it to somebody else. So when I got the car, it has some vice grips on it, which is just the worst thing ever in the world. And I couldn't find a Lexus steering wheel, but there was some Cor uh, Corollas in the junkyard. And as you know, Toyota parts, a lot of them are interchangeable. So here we are. But alternator is in the car. So I already have fired it up and warmed it up, got all the coolants out. So look how awesome that is. Beautiful. I do have a big exhaust leak. I'm gonna do another video about me fixing that because it's broken right in the middle of the car as you can hear it. It sounds like crap. But no lights. Before when the alternator was bad, it looked like a damn Christmas tree. There was everything lit up because of that. If these cars, if you don't have you know the right amount of power going through it you're gonna have some problems. So that just solved a lot of my issues. So now I'm gonna take this thing out on the road and get it going. And I don't have tags for it yet. So Monday, I am gonna go and get this thing registered and start putting it on the road and have some fun. So the car is fixed. It's charging at the voltage it should. Everything's awesome on it. Been on a couple test drives. I've even fixed the exhaust. You can see it in the background right there. I just removed it and straight piped the whole car. I'll shoot a video of that another day. It's very, very loud. <laughs> um, so if you're not a subscriber to the channel, welcome. Hello, internet world. Welcome to my channel. If you've already been here, thank you. 
check out some other videos, hit that little subscribe button, and stick around. So, something I forgot to mention is the prices of the alternator. It cost me $100 to have that one rebuilt. So I actually called auto parts stores, and to get a rebuilt one from an auto parts store was $100, or $200. And then I called Lexus, and they told me it was $400, and they didn't even have one in stock. They would have to call an order for me. So right there, what I was saying in the beginning of the video, get it rebuilt because I paid 100. I saved hundreds of dollars doing it. One, doing it myself. Two, having it rebuilt by somebody instead of buying new or buying a rebuilt one from a store. So just find a guy in your city who rebuilds them and save yourself a ton of money. So thank you for stopping by and watching. See you next time.